Hey y'all, welcome back to Geek Switch Up. I'm Tyson. This week, we're gonna be building this toy biplane. Um, it's, it's a really fun build. It's actually fairly straightforward, but gives you kind of a lot of places where you could customize it or add your own details. Let's get to it. Part of what makes this build simple is that the wings and the rudder, the tail, the propeller, a lot of this plane is cut from the same size board. So I started this by cutting this board into a block that I set aside for the plane body, and the rest of the board was split in half the table saw, just to show that you, you don't need a band saw to resaw small parts like this. I used a planer to bring both boards to a quarter inch thickness, but you wouldn't need that either. You could get pretty good results right off the table saw and then clean them up with a bit of sanding. The plans I've drawn up here, I'll make those available for free. We're all going through this kind of difficult time dealing with COVID in various ways. So if you or your kids are going a little bit stir crazy, I just wanted to make this project available. So I'll link to the download in the description. And if you do build this plane or just download the plans, please let me know how well they work for you because I would love the honest feedback. The main wings are identical, so you can cut these out together if you stack the boards with some double stick tape. And these wings are also straight, so I cut them on the table saw first, then cut in the curves on the scroll saw. If you don't have a scroll saw, coping saw will work just fine. The order in which you work on the different parts of the plane isn't that important, so I worked on getting the wings and some of the details finished before working on the body. Like the propeller, it was cut out and drilled for the dowel that will hold it later. Then as a final detail, I used a Dremel to carve a little bit of shape on the front side. Just enough for some visual interest. I still wanted to leave a fair amount of wood so it's not too fragile. And the propeller will be held in place by a dowel and I wanted to create a sort of cone at the front of the propeller assembly. My first attempt was to glue in a dowel and rough cut a circle that would be shaped on some sandpaper, but the dowel was too thin and this broke almost immediately. So then I switched to a quarter inch dowel, which I could then carefully shape into the propeller cone. Using quarter inch dowel also meant I could use quarter inch bolts to hold these parts for sanding and shaping. Doing this freehand still resulted in odd shaped ovals, so I finally used a scrap block made from some plywood, drilled a quarter inch hole through it, and used this to help steady the bolt while spinning it. This also wasn't perfect, but it did okay for shaping these cylinder parts. Now by all means, if you have a lathe, a drill press, some hole saws, those are all good ways to make this process easier, or at least a little more reliable. But these experiments were part of my attempt to limit the tools I was using and try a few simple ideas. The tail and rudder had also been cut out by this point, though I needed to go back later and cut in the slots to fit them together. And that was just an oversight with my original plans. So with some of the details underway, I could turn back to the body or the fuselage of the plane. This is a point where the order of operations does help. Before cutting the angles away that will shape the tail, I wanted to add some of the detail, like the cockpit and also cut in the slots, 
that will hold the tail wing and rudders. Make sure you mark these cuts to the board size you end up using, but the plans can give you a good starting point. For the cockpit, I used some different sizes of Forzner bits. A supporting board helped to cut the larger curve from the side and then carefully cut in from the top. Again, a drill press would make this more stable, but just showing it can easily be done if all you have is a drill. I wanted to embed the lower wing into the body itself, so I cut away the area to accommodate that wing and then used the stop block on my table saw sled as a vertical support to cut in the slots for the tail. And this was done in several micro passes to try and get the fit just right. And keep in mind that the height for each side is a little different based on the plans. As a final detail, I drilled a few shallow holes, which you could put small dowels in or add your own little engine details. The shape of the tail body was marked off And the easiest way I could think of to make these cuts was to set up my table saw fence at exactly the width of a spare board and then use double stick tape to help place the plane body exactly on the cutting edge. And this worked really well and I was able to use that same piece of tape for all four cuts. The final cut wanted to tip up, so I used two push sticks to help secure it, but this worked great. Now I need to sharpen my scrapers, but they still work okay in getting rid of the burn marks from the saw. And then I gave the body some chamfers to help shape it and ease the edges. An optional detail is adding a larger block at the front. So I found another cutoff that was about the right size. I chamfered the corners and stuck it to the body so I could drill through both blocks. Then I drilled a hole to fit the propeller assembly and spun the propeller a few times because that's what you do. So this front block will be held on by the quarter inch dowel, but the main gluing surface is end grained, which is a weak connection. So one way to help make it stronger is to treat the surfaces ahead of time with some glue. This is called sizing the open grain, and I thinning the glue with a little bit of water. Some say thinning the glue helps, some say it doesn't matter. Either way, 
Sizing the end grain should help this connection. Now around this time I attached the bottom wing in preparation for working on the wheels. This connection should be plenty strong, but optionally you could add some dowels for extra strength. Okay, let's talk wheels. This was another area that went through some iterations in the design. I tried originally to create wheel struts that looked a bit more delicate. I was trying to keep this plane overall from feeling blocky, but there are two fairly obvious problems with this design. One is simply that it's fragile And the other is that it required me to cut in really small mortises into the wings. Now it's possible to make this work, but just not worth the effort. And I like version two better anyway. Version two is much stronger. It's simpler to create, attaches better. And I like how it looks. This version uses some wider stock and a Forsner bit to create the recess for the wheel. Again, sticking with just a drill, I held these little parts by placing them on some sandpaper and using a block against one of the flat sides. And this worked really well to hold it down. Then I could mark and drill in the quarter inch hole and these are ready to attach to the wings. On my plane, I had to cut out the original wing that had those mortises in it, but it was easy to make and glue in a new wing. If you build this plane, you may want to wait till later before gluing the wheel bases on. It will make adding the second wing a bit easier but in my case, I spaced these out at some distance that looked good and glued them on. I also glued in the tail and rudder, which again, you might wait on, but it all works out. I ended up with a small gap between the body and the rudder, so also glued in a wedge that I later cut flush to fix that up. It was definitely fun at this point to see the plane taking shape, but now we get to the challenge of adding the second wing. If you are going to attach the wings so that they're lined up vertically, and all your struts are also vertical, you could mark and pre-drill the wings, which would make this process a bit simpler and it'll still look really good. I wanted to try creating offset wings and angled struts, so I took a different approach, but one that is still pretty simple. I stacked a few scrap boards until I had a wing height that looked about right, and I also set the top layer back a bit for the amount of offset I wanted in the wings. Then I shot these scrap blocks together with a few brads and cut it up into some smaller sections. I marked each wing for the placement of the struts and I chose to leave the center struts running vertically and made the outside struts angle outward. With the setup ready, I could use double stick tape and a clamp to attach the blocks and wings in the correct final position, add some 
tape to help with tear out, but then just drilled the holes by eye, trying to connect one dot with another. You could drill all the way through both wings, and I didn't have a depth stop, but I tried to drill only halfway through the bottom wing, and surprisingly, I only went all the way through on one of these attempts. So seven out of eight holes done correctly is better than I thought I'd do. To glue in the struts, I cleaned up my pencil marks and used the blocks again, this time with less double stick tape and some clamps so they'll be easy to remove. Then place and glue in the dowels. For these struts, I went back to the smaller dowel size, but with eight of these, it will be very strong. Just place the dowel into position, put a bit of glue at both sides and twist it in to spread the glue. Clean up as you go, and you've got an offset wing with angled struts. One thing a few of you might notice is that I placed my upper wing further back and most biplanes and my drawings show the upper wing forward. This was just a mental error on my part, but you know, place your wings however you'd want. The dowels are easy to clean up and the front is ready to glue on. Of course, as you do this, just be very careful that glue doesn't get on the propeller itself and that you have just enough room to spin it freely. A rubber band can help as the clamp to hold the front block tight while the glue dries. Finally, the wheels are attached as well. I created the wheels using the drill and sandpaper earlier and these worked fine, but of course if you have the right size hole drill, that's a, a good way to do it as well. Also wooden wheels are cheap and easy to buy from a store. Still though, as another test of what we might do with just a drill, I did round these corners and add just a little bit of detail to these wheels with a chisel and using the bolt itself as a steady rest. The axle was measured and I softened the ends before gluing it in place. Again, being careful that the glue only stuck to the wheels so it would spin freely. And a lot of these parts you could pre-finish. I just wiped on some Odie's oil to the fully assembled plane and it was all done. So that's it, super fun. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. I'd love your feedback. Um, possibly in a future build, I actually have a different version of this that's a little more involved. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But until next time, thanks for watching.